So this is a very common occurrence here at Legacy Lumber. We surface lumber for other customers, other folks, hobbyists, professionals, all of the above. Say hi to uh, Mike. He is known as Mike Russian Olive Wood Slabs in my cell phone. So when he shoots me a text, uh, I remember exactly who it is. And we don't see Russian Olive Wood too often. It would be cut down in, where was it? Brampton. Brampton. So like Brampton, Oakville, the Toronto-ish area, it would have been planted at some time. Anyways, these are ones here. He's made, looks like a river table. Got some yep. epoxy on the go. We got yep. some other pieces here. A couple of shelves. And uh, this is usually how it ends up. And what we're going to be doing is we'll be processing all these boards here, either on our large CNC, if they have got a little too much twist. Usually poured epoxy, we don't need to do it on here. We're going to head through either our 37 inch. This is a jointer and planer. So it's got a bottom head as well as a top head. And it's a real jointer. You can adjust your thickness here on the head. And the key is that the jointer head is far away from the planer head. So it has time to do real jointing, develop a flat surface, and then stay there as it goes through the planer. Pretty key. And from there, this is, this, is, this is a beast. This is like strong, strong. Remove a lot of material very accurately. And like I said, truly a jointer. So if it's 37 inch and under, we'll usually go through this first. Then we'll come over to, this is a 52 inch planer, sander, sander. And in this process, you're gonna be guaranteed uh, a perfectly flat, tabletop, bar top, uh, whatever you've created, thanks to the old jointer planer and then the 52 inch planer sander. Here, I'll open it up for you. And these are all spiral head machines. So fortunately, relatively quiet. Um, you do need intense dust collection. You can see we have three six inch ports here and hidden behind here is two uh, sandpaper belts, I guess. The first one is actually a drum so it's a little bit more aggressive. It can take more material, not as accurate as a platen. Next one is gonna be the platen flat surface. And then uh, it's a little bit more accurate because it has a pad there that like pushes down fully and it has a, a longer contact area. So I'm gonna close this up. I have to go, I gotta talk with the customer, just uh, confirm exactly what he's after. Sometimes we'll also cut to size. You know, we got a nice sliding table saw. We got uh, all the fest tool. Oh man, we've drank in the green Kool-Aid folks. Uh, but I'm going to talk to the customer now. We're going to get a little rundown on what we need to do. So this is what we've ended up with. There's one, two, three kind of coffee table size stuff. And this is uh, very, very common stuff that we do. We're going to be surfacing this. It's going to come out of the wide belt sander, sanded to 120 grit. And obviously we got to use our judgment if there's a low spot, high spot, how much it takes. We're just kind of usually left with like, you know, maximum thickness, use your discretion. Fortunately, we're not just a sawmill. We're not just a kiln. Uh, some say we're not just a wood shop, but we're all three. We're furniture makers. We create the lumber. We use the lumber right to the end. And during our epoxy coffee table workshop, this is two foot by four foot. Every month we have eight students come in. So I'm, uh, I'm chopping up eight exact coffee tables just like that. This is one aspect where this type of uh, board here would be very difficult to even use for anything because of the, the micro cracking that it has. You can see it all through the board and he actually uh, glued, wood glued uh, paper to the bottom. That was his uh, solution. I suggested uh, parchment paper, wax paper next time. But this epoxy is gonna go all the way through fully through that crack right to the bottom and really stabilize a slab like this. And, and really now it's a slab that's rock solid. So sure, epoxy is liquid plastic, not the most ideal situation for the environment. Totally, totally agree. Uh, I love a nice solid wood table, but uh, it has its uses like this and like this too, like lumber like this just would not even be used, uh, where now it's going to turn into a beautiful, um, some would say, an art artwork uh, as a coffee table or hall table. So we're going to get through it. I'm going to stop labbing. These are going to get through our machines and we're going to surface them for this customer. Say hi to Kayla. She is a high school work placement co-op. And she's been with me uh, for a few weeks now. We've gotten to do a lot of different things and training her on the planer sander has been one of those. So she's able to operate herself. Yes, I know her hair should be up in a hair elastic. I'll make sure to remind her, don't you worry. So this has a planing head, two sanding heads. We try to always run just the planer head 
until we need to run the sanding head because that's going to save and extend the life of the sandpaper, which is important because that's one of the more expensive parts of the machine. We're able to remove about three millimeters per pass, which is pretty, pretty incredible for us. This is a 100 horsepower machine, 40 horse on the planer, 30 on the sander and another 40 horse on the next sanding head. The customer actually used uh, garbage bags, I believe, at the bottom of the form. So you can see the crinkle. That's one thing that happens with epoxy. It heats up and it will pull any kind of loose material like that into it. So uh, don't advise that either for form material. All right, over here is the sliding table saw. We can easily square up these pieces pretty quickly, very accurately. So this side here has been squared up nicely. All wood edge, nice and square. This edge here still has the epoxy on it. So we're still gonna run that through. I actually forgot to do that edge. Uh, two more to go, so four of them uh, in total. There's one over there now. And uh, these two have to get through. 